got to make sure they're uh, in. Hey, what's up? Ken from Palm Beach Dino here. Today we're going to do a shop tour of MPR Racing Engines. They're located here in Boynton Beach, Florida, which is just one exit north of uh, where we are. And uh, we've been working with MPR for quite a long time. Uh, a lot of people know the MPR name, but I don't really see many videos about the place or what they do exactly. So we're going to go ahead and head over there. Uh, one of the things we're going to concentrate on today is sleeving a Coyote block. That's something uh, that may be very interesting to some people. And also, you know, let's point out that... Uh, just because sleeves end up in a block doesn't mean they're installed correctly. NPR has invested in the proper machinery to do this uh, correctly. And uh, we're going to show you how to do it. So we'll be there in just a few minutes and start rolling the camera. Okay, I'm over here at NPR Racing Engines. We're going to head on in. Uh, I believe this is the uh, office area and the assembly room. So let's go in there and see what's going on. Hello. Okay. All right, here we go. This is the assembly room. There's the master himself, Tyler Icorn. What's going on, everybody? What do you got going on over here? Well, what we're doing now, we're filing some pistons to fit the rings. Diamond Pistons makes a really great product, but sometimes we have to just take a little bit of the burrs out, a little bit of the flaws just to make them, you know, right, ring spin perfect, you know, pins fit perfect on them. No binding, no, you know, burrs. None of that stuff. Awesome. Why, any of that. Why don't you give us a quick look around here? Well, this is the assembly room. This is where all basically the magic happens. You see some engines lined up ready to go out to some customers here. Some are being just finished and built right now. What do you guys work on primarily? It looks like you got a little bit, bit of everything here. We have a, yeah, a little bit of everything. We mainly do, as everybody knows, probably these coyotes, especially the coyotes. We do a lot of LSs now. We're starting to do a lot of those now. We're starting to brighten the horizon a little bit. This is one of the, this is gonna be a badass GT500 motor for a customer over in Texas. Awesome. And then this is over here, another GT500, ready to go out to a special someone over on the West Coast. Awesome. And then over here, this is, we have four stations. We have four stations so we can build four engines at the same time, just basically get a little bit of production out of here. We can get them done a lot faster. We have a lot more room in this area so we can get a lot of engines finished. Uh, over here we have the blocks waiting to be assembled. All these blocks are waiting to be assembled and everything. As you can tell, we're getting ready to throw these on the stands because we have a couple carts ready to go. Crankshafts over here. We have a fully nice area here. All our mics, the gaskets you need. Nice filing area. Clean parts ready to go. Awesome. All right, you want to head over to the machine shop and show yeah. them where all the magic happens? We'll show everyone over the machine shop. All right, we're over here in the uh, machine shop area. What's this first room? So this is the cylinder head room now. This used to be the old um, assembly room. As you can tell, it's a lot smaller than what it was over there in bay number one. So this is where we assemble all the cylinder heads. This is where they get final checked, assembled. So the spring machine heads waiting to be assembled, ready to go. So this machine here is used to install valve springs, right? Yes, it installs valve springs air powered. It pushes the springs down to put them on. All you right. Get special grease to put them on. Now over here, this is the assembly. This is the we have a bounce machine. State of the art CWT bounce machine. Bounce the machines, all the specs that we need, all the qualities. And we have a bridge port. Everyone probably has a bridge port in the machine shop. And awesome. this is our valve machine. This is what cuts all of our valves. This is where the Tyler Icorn trick valve job comes out of? Yeah. All right. Service machine. What do we got here, Tyler? So this is an 18 block that's just been cut ready for sleeves. Oh wow, that's awesome. You can awesome. see it's all been ready to go. It's ready to go. We put inserts in them so they don't punch through the holes. And this thing's about to go in the oven to get sleeves today. All right, so like, what, how does this machine work get done? Like who does this stuff for you? So this machine is actually done on this right here. So this is the machine that cuts from sleeves. This cuts for everything. It's ready to be probed. We center off the dowel pin over here. Once it's centered off of here, we have measurements that go off of each bore space, so every bore is concentric and it's straight with the dowel pin here. Once it's done, we have specific cutters, so it's like this. This is a boring bar machine. This has to cut everything. We have specific sizes and cuts. 
So good procedure, it's cut, cut, cut. We verify, we verify the size of the gauge. Mm -hmm. Once that's cut, we circular and purple which cuts that big groove. Mm -hmm. Once that cut, when that cut is made, what we do is then finally deburr over here. We clean it, and then it goes over there, and after that, we throw it in the oven, put some nice dart and sleeves in it. Awesome. Over here we got uh, the mastermind of the whole operation, Tim Icorn. What are you working on here, Tim? Honing some, uh, honing the block? We've got a kind of new block that's all finished up. We're doing the final touches on it. We're giving it a nice diamond home. Awesome. Good job, making the cylinders nice and round, getting everything where we like it. Um, we're them up. As you can see, we use two core plates on our Coyote motors because these things move around. Uh, they're not very rigid blocks, so you got to make sure they're uh, in almost running order when you try to make the cylinders round. Awesome. I wanted to talk a little bit more about the uh, sleeving process yeah. over here and get some of your opinions on, yeah. you know, the different ways to do it and everything. As I can, you know, obviously there's tons of engine builders that you see online and everything, and not that you can't build a great engine in your garage or yourself or as a business, but tell me a little bit more about this machine and what made you buy it. Well, you know, back in the day, you know, uh, engine assemblers were, were probably much a dime a dozen, but the machine work was lacking. So what we did here, uh, we bought this machine three years ago, uh, the CNC, the Roller F69A, specifically for block machining. Um, not only does it do sleeves in the Coyote, but it does lifter bushings for push rods, cam tunnels, for, for cam bearings, uh, pretty much everything that we needed to do. Um, on this particular deal here, um, it's a very accurate machine as far as it's a blueprint situation that you need to get these things on. What it is is every engine has a bore spacing and you want to keep that bore spacing as accurate as you can in order to maintain performance. So from the factory, they're not very performance wise. The bore spacing is off a little bit. So when we put the sleeves in, we do correct a huge problem from Ford with their inaccurate bore spacing when they place the sleeves in the factory block. So you do gain power there by getting everything in center and everything where it needs to be so there's no unwanted cocking or anything. It kind of centers everything back up. Now over here, you can see, these are all the blueprints of all the engines that we go off of. As you can see, every engine has a specific blueprint. So when Ford engineered them, and Chevy and all them guys, they engineered it to have a certain bore spacing and a certain blueprint. Well, of course, production tolerances in the, in the factory and, and the people manning the machines, they're not quite accurate. They can be as much off as 12,000. Well, that's so, super interesting to me, honestly. You know, I, we've been working together forever. Right. I have one of your sleeve blocks in my car, and I didn't even really consider like realigning the bore spacing and all right. that. That's, that's a huge deal, and that's probably something I would guess that not everybody's getting accomplished when they put these sleeves no, in. No, the problem is, is with, with um, I'm gonna say older boring blocks and stuff like that where you can do the machines, you can do a good job, but the problem is, is that you don't have the accuracy of the CNC machine. The problem is it's more of a roll of finger deal or a dial indicator deal that you're dial indicating off a cylinder that's not actually in its proper space in the first place. So yeah, you can get it in the proper spot. So what that happens is, say you start on this cylinder here and it's zero. This one here from the factory is two, three thousandths off. Well, you're gonna board that one two, three thousand off the indicating or whatever else. Then it's gonna go down from the line from there. So by the time you're done here, you can have ten thousand soft four centers. Ah, okay. So not only that, does that mess it up? It kind of gives you a. It's harder to get the flange sleeves because the flange sleeves, you actually have. Of course, you have uh, the sleeve, and then you have a flange at the top to keep it from rotating. The mm -hmm. problem with aluminum blocks is they grow so much. Right. So if you just put a straight wall sleeve in it, it's gonna rotate. I don't care how tight you put it in or whatever, it will rotate without having some kind of locking mechanism in it. Well, this one here, it locks in. Let yeah. me move this up here. While we're on the topic of sleeving and strengthening these blocks, I'm curious to know your opinion of uh, the, um, the cylinder supports that everybody uh, talks about well, and uses. You know, we, we do do the cylinder supports. Um, it's basically for the guys who are going to make over 30 pounds of boost and over 1,500 horsepower. When you do the sleeves, you're getting rid of all that that area behind it because the sleeve is much more rigid than the block is. Right. So Dart does a good job of the sleeve on the back side of it that you don't have that distortion or the right. side load from back to forth. Gotcha. Now okay. we also got with Diamond Pistons a few years back and tried to reduce the thrust load on the Coyote blocks in the first place um, to, to kind of get rid of that, that force that mm -hmm. comes up on the top, especially when it's at top back like, center and firing. Explain to people where the, the biggest issue is the biggest with, issue when is you don't right up, sleeve it. Right up in here, it'll start cracking. So what happens is it starts cracking right about probably about a half inch down or up. Mm -hmm. And that takes place because that's where the combustion takes place. That's where it fires right. off the cylinder. Okay. So, you know, 12, 10 degrees, wherever it forks out that center, that's where it starts off. So what happens is that the most force is right there because you're firing that whole cylinder right there. So there's no support behind a stock sleeve block. Gotcha. So, I mean, you can see the difference here from this block over here. I mean, you can see the difference. 
in sleeves. Oh wow, yeah, big difference there. So you got this little sleeve here. That's you know, it's it's you know, unfortunately, you know, the quality of the of the products that they put out for the floor stuff is not is not as good as it used to be. So the aluminum's not as good as it used to be, and the sleeves not as good as it used to be. So when you have all that force pushing on it, mm. something's got to give. Gotcha. The aluminum's going to give, and the sleeves going to crack over. Well, speaking of that, okay, so now we're talking. Um Generally, I know there's some differences in the blocks between 11 and 14 and 15 through 17, but the biggest change came in 18, which you have a block here machine. Right. This one here. Uh, let's hear your right opinion here. on the 18 setup. This machine we got here ready to go. Um, this one's machine for the sleeves, as you can see. Uh -huh. uh, it's cut for the for the dart and sleeves. It's got the relief cut for the flange. Um, What's your general opinion on this versus a uh, well, you know, we, we, earlier block? The 18 blocks are, are so far so good. I mean, the, the jury's kind of still out of it because we only have a few guys out there who are pushing them. So it's it's kind of too new to say what it is, but I like the block number one because it has a 12 millimeter studs. Mm -hmm. Now the way they did this over here on a factory style deal, it's a little weak. But when we put the sleeves in there, it gets rid of it. So gotcha. there's really no room to put a support system in there, and I don't think it's really necessary after we do the sleeves, honestly. Awesome. Now the biggest problem with the 18s is is that it comes with a plasma bore. Gotcha. Now the plasma bore isn't being done by the same same people who did the TT350s and the TT500s back in the day, so it's not as good. So in order to get anything to seal on a plasma bore, it's got to have a dart sleeve in it. All right, you brought it up. I didn't bring it up. Plasma bore, you know what everybody's going to want to know. Mm -hmm. The tick. Do you think that's a, a, well, related to it, or what do you think related, is that? The tick is related to the plasma bore, but it's related to a clearance issue that Ford's obviously having an issue with. Yeah. Um, they're just think, setting it up too tight, you think? Or? Well, I think they're setting it up too loose. Oh, too loose, too okay. Loose. That's why you're getting the knocking sound to it. Gotcha. So what it is, it's honestly, you have a cast piston in the factory block, and then you have certain, you have grade one, two, and three of, of factory blocks. Mm. I think, unfortunately, somebody switched a grade three block with a grade one, and they're using grade one pistons on grade three blocks. Ah. Therefore, the piston wall clearance is like six or seven thousandths. Now, factory 18 block specifics are five tenths to one and two tenths, which is tight. The reason why you run them so tight is because these blocks grow. When we heat them to 200 degrees, they grow almost five thousandths of an inch. Wow, that's crazy. So they grow. So tighter tolerances is a lot better. But you got to be careful because you can't just fire these things up and start revving to the moon. You got to scuff the skirt. I don't care who it is. Gotcha. Okay. I got one more question for you, and then I'm gonna let you go. Uh, back to the 11 to 14 block that does have, you know, you've probably done a lot more with the 11 to 17 blocks. Right. Um, I guess my question is, is you know, you've got different levels of you know sleeving. You know, you've got regular sleeves. You've got the supports. You've got things like, you know, what kind of things do you guys do for cylinder? Um, uh, sealing like a, a fire ring or anything like that. We, you do, know? We, we do. We offer the fire ring, which is guys making, you know, between 30 40 pounds of boost. We have an O ring. Um, do you have any? Uh, this one, actually, that one that's in the machine right now is cut for O ring. Yeah. Um, but what it is basically, we have an O ring that's cut for MLS gaskets for mm -hmm. MLS and, and water. Um, so when you say O ring, for people that aren't really familiar with this, it's not really like what you consider an O ring. It's metal, uh, but it's like a metal ring. It's a metal goes... ring. What do we use a copper ring to use with the MLS gasket? So it's okay. a little more pliable, so you don't have any leaking or any kind of issues like that. So it's one of those things you don't want it protruding a lot. Now you can use a steel ring, but you're only going to have protrusion between three and five thousand, which is not a lot. Right. And all we're doing is an O ring is we're keeping that gasket from trying to float. Okay. Once that head lifts, and it's going to lift. I don't care how much anybody thinks it's not. It's right. going to lift. We're keeping that gasket stationary to keep it sealed up. Once that head lifts up enough and that gasket moves over, that's when that's when you blow a head gasket. So the O-rings keep it clamped down. So you got that eight to ten thousands where that head can lift and keep it clamped down. Now the firing we basically reserve for guys running copper gaskets, usually dry deck and stuff like that. Not to say that the copper gaskets are a little bit more maintenance and you have to retort the head. Mm -hmm. And we all know working on a coyote in the car with cams, you have to pull the cams and everything out to retort the head, so it becomes a, a bit of a nightmare. All right, well, I got the, the last question I have is because this is going to be something everybody wants to know. So let's get it straight from you because people ask me all the time, and I give some general advice. But let's hear it from you. Okay, so I'm building a coyote. There's different levels. You can go obviously can keep the sock sleeves. Right. You can sleeve it. You could support it. You could fire ring it. Where at what? Uh, not counting full on race cars that are dry decked and anything. Anything that's a street car-ish that's going to see some street and and we want water going through the motor at what point do you recommend each like so so you got a stock block what's that going to handle a stock block once it's built up with rods and pistons and all the arp hardware you know we rate them for 900 wheel okay um it's a little bit lower than everybody else but you know you're leaving still, some room there you well, know it's yeah. not that it's just oh. the next thing to go is the block so right you're, you're getting to a point where the block can be an issue um after that we have our uh, sleeve block with hp rods we rate those for 1200 horsepower um and and it's one of those things. And then we have our sleeve blocks with billet rods. We wait for 1,500 horsepower. Now the guys who are going to make over 25 pounds of boost, 
We try to push them to the coolant support mm -hmm. and also try to push them to the O-ring head. Um, it's just a boost situation, you know what I mean? These things flex, we want to keep it like that. Right. Now another option we have is to machine any um, you know, 12 to 17 block or 12 millimeter studs. Right. So we can use the old 11 helmet uh, studs on that setup. Gotcha, yeah, that's definitely another issue with right. the newer setups right. that people don't, aren't aware of. My own personal engine that you did was a long time ago, uh, so you know mine is going to be a good example. Uh, you know, I guess I, I plan on seeing how far it'll go before we pull it out. Mine is a straight up normal sleeved. I got the billet rods in there, right. but I don't have supports. I don't have firing and all that. And I want to get there, but I'm not going to pull it back out for that right, right. now. Let's just, you know, I don't want to grenade the thing. So I guess I'll decide that as we go faster and faster. Maybe I'll hit a point before it breaks that I decide to pull it out. Right. But my plan is going to be. 40 pounds of boost, plasma man intake, you know, full retard on that. So, you know, I guess it'll be coming back here soon. <laughs> oh, no, we, still, we, got to come, we did your engine quite a few years ago, so we do have a bunch of updates that we've been working on. Yeah, but it, um, but the good thing is, is, you know, my engine was built, I think, probably three, three and a half years ago. Yeah. And it went on drag week. Yeah. It's been multiple eight-second passes all day long, no problem. I'm super hard on the thing. I run the car uh, with an undersized intercooler, so it gets real hot. Right. And it doesn't miss a beat. I don't get a puff of smoke out of it. I love my engine, you know. Well, I don't, that's, that's why I don't want to give it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, I have a hard time getting people to bring your back engines back to me for refreshes because they're running so good. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's one of those points that, hey, you know what? You got over 500 runs on this thing, man. It's going to need range. I don't care right. what it is. You're losing power somewhere. Right. So, definitely. All right. Well, I want to thank Tim here at MPR and Tyler and everybody else here. Uh, we're going to cut this short, uh, or not short. I guess it was pretty good. Lots of good information there. And uh, we'll bring you another video soon uh, from one of the other companies we work with. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and like us on Facebook. And we'll be releasing these videos every few days. So uh, check us out.